بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه yeah, Our dua to our brother Ibrahim who's uh, you know has some disease فأن نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يشفي وشفاء لا يغادر سقما اللهم يا رب الناس يا شافي يشفي شفاء لا يغادر سقما اللهم يا رب العرش العظيم يا كريم ويا رحمن ويا رحيم اذهب عنه البأس إنك أنت على كل شيء قدير برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليم We'll continue inshallah ta'ala in our session Wasaya for life and this is talking about al-jihad and uh, of course talking about the jihad uh, you know it's kind of uh, it has kind uh, I will say the negative connotation just by uh, listening the word of the jihad which is assimilated to violence and uh, and uh, you know uh, killing and, and fighting and, and so on eh? however as we have explained it the jihad nothing have to do with the fighting but in the time of the Prophet وسلم, it was you know, associated with the fighting because the jihad itself is the effort to put of struggle, of striving to uh, carry the thing in the right way and the best way. Someone to do good work, he has to have jihad. That effort that someone put, invest to achieve his goal or her goals, that is the jihad. So the jihad is really you know, there is a drive, the drive that lead, helping one to fulfill his objective you know this drive is the uh, the longing uh, the you know the love of the thing that the person is doing and there's you know uh, that uh, achievement only can come with a lot of work that lot of work striving struggling uh, you know uh, facing the challenges that is the jihad in the path of the believer uh, regarding his journey of life on this earth you know how a person, how a person can be successful in his life. The, the answer to, to the success to this life, it's really to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you, the one who created you, the one who gave you life, the one who uh, provided you all the gift in this life, and then after dying, as we said, we're not going to die, which is mean you die as, as a death is a transition to, to another dimension of life, and then another dimension of life, and another dimension of life. So there's three types of lives that is waiting, waiting ahead of us, waiting for us. Therefore, if you, as a believer, thinking that, okay, so my life is for eternity, you know, the body that I had is just a vessel helping me to cross and to be on this planet Earth. And then, you know, uh, the soul will stay. Uh, thinking in this dimension, you know, one, uh, the struggle, you know, uh, that one will have in this life, that called the jihad. Because he has an objective, right? He does not want to be deluded from the path. He does not want to be distracted. Um, he does not want to lose the direction toward his destiny or destination and so on. So that's the jihad. However, with the jihad, it has three types, three levels. The highest level is where the life, the life of a person is threatened. That's the biggest one. So the biggest one and the highly rewarded because someone uh, is, is like ready or able to give everything for the cause he or she is standing for. Whoever who dies for the cause that they believe in, they call them martyrs, right? So in Islam the same? However, what is the highest cause in the life of a believer? Is correctness, is justice, is equality. These are the elements that define, uh, you know, the, the, the message of Islam. But all of these are done in the way of the only one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So it's not like according to what I think should be or what, you know, things, uh, you know, should be done. No, it is according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, why according to the way of Allah? Why not according to our way? If you think what is best for us. Simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knowing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you in the Quran, you might dislike something that is good for you. And you might like something that is bad for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. Then your trust in Allah to guide you, to help you, uh, you know, journeying into your life, that is Islam. And whatever system around you, the system of the self, the system of the whims, the system of the desire, the system of the environment around you, pulling you away or pushing you away from the path, for you to struggle to be on the path because you know certainly that your path is what is going to lead to everything everyone else is looking forward to have. If someone, for example, what you are seeking, say happiness, he said, my path take me to happiness. What you are seeking, he said, I'm seeking peace of mind. He said, my path take me to peace of mind. Because all of this that every one human being is looking forward to have, Allah told us, he promised us in the Quran that he's going to provide it for you. Therefore, the struggle, the striving to be on the path will bring all the result that you are longing to have, which result every human being is longing to achieve. But you, you have the trust because you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revelation that this is going to take you to his path, to take you to that happiness. Therefore, the greatest of the thing, if the God of the universe is pleased with you, that's it. You are on the path of what every soul is longing to have. Therefore, the jihad, so the highest, when you're, uh, you're the most valuable thing into your life uh, is threatened, that's the highest jihad. What is the most valuable thing is your life. Because if you put money and life, which is more valuable? Of course, the life. <laughs> because if you keep your money and you lose your life, you're not going to be enjoying your money. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم. Allah subhanahu wa taala when he made the bargain and the covenant and the oath with the believer, he said he bought from them their life, the greatest thing, and then their wealth, which is mean to use it into striving to establish the message of justice. That's what it means. And then he said, قال يجاهدون بأموالهم وأنفسهم they strive in the sake of Allah with their wealth and their life. So they start with the, the lower one, and then comes to the highest one. And this is the path of the striving. This is the path of the striving. Because um, in every movement of liberation, when you look at the history, you know, all of them have been qualified by noble people, whoever who died, you know, died for the, the right sake, for the sake of liberating his country, his land, in all the constitution. You know, and if you look in our society, the same. Or they dignify people who gave their life for this, for this country. So the believer, he will act in an universal way. So justice for all. So you cannot, for example, contribute in bringing justice here uh, in detriment or on behalf of the justice of other people, of killing people. No, that's not the way of Islam. So it will be justice for all, equality for all, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, how can be someone uh, conscious, dedicated, devoted, longing for this great purpose of life? Which is the purpose of life that Allah defined for us and he called it worship. So this is how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So the worship is not restricted to praying. The praying helps you to connect, not to just to make Umrah and Hajj and fasting. The fasting helps you to gain, you know, power of piety and righteousness, uh, as well as the giving, you know, in the sake of Allah, sharing and helping the poor and helping some of the causes with what you have out of wealth. So all of these are elements to strengthen you, right? But the true worship is all your action of life, everything that you do in your life, that is a worship. And this worship could not be achieved without the jihad. Part of your worship that you have to work, right? So you inscribe the work as part of your worship because that you're going to win and gain the income, you know, which is going to help you have, you know, uh, spend on your family, support and everything. So the support, you know, that provision is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you have to make your action, your part of the action. So you will not be staying at your home. He you said, you know, God the Almighty, he's going to send me all the provision and pay my bills. You know, they're going to say this one person is crazy, right? So you have to work. So that work that you're doing it, because when you gain something and you buy, for example, like this example, the food, and you pour it in front of you and you eat, you said, Alhamdulillah. You see, that the process to get the provision and to have it on your table and share it with your family, and when you eat it, when you say, Alhamdulillah, that's an action of worship, starting from waking up in the morning just to the evening, that work that was part of the worship. Now, how in the system of a human being, this striving, the jihad can be effective, relevant, powerful? You know, um, in, the, in, in our society, when we have, for example, what will be the, the closest word to jihad? You know, because jihad encompasses many meanings inside it. One of the elements of the jihad is the willpower. The willpower, that's the drive. And then if you have the willpower, you're going to act and you work hard. So the willpower by plus working hard to, to get to the achievement of your goal, that ensemble is called jihad. But the jihad starts with one great thing, is first to make jihad within your own self. Because if someone always distracted, the, the person who distracted, following, you know, his whims, and just following people, following the trend, any trend, the people they have, he's follow it or she follow it. And then by following certain trend, there's this big risk to fall into addiction. Addiction of anything, addiction of smoking, of drug, addiction of gaming, addiction of, you know, name it. So that addiction is going to remove the person from acting toward his true purpose of life. A purpose that dignifies them, a purpose that gives reason to their all existence. Because the believer does not look forward to make sense or reason to a certain part of his life. Say, I'm young now, I need you know, to, to, to take advantage of my youth. So this is my purpose. So my jihad becomes is like to just have fun. I said, hold on. What about you know when you grow, when you gonna be older? What about when you're going to die? What about when you're going to be in the life of the grave? What about when you're going to be in the day uh, you know meeting Allah in the day of resurrection? So the time of the youth that you enjoyed it and you made your own jihad is not to gonna help you. And how many people in our community? From the youth, they passed away. Huh? How many people? Right? So the first one, the jihad is the jihad of the soul. You struggle, you strive about to cleanse your own soul. That's the greatest of the jihad. Then the next jihad will be is to help people around you. 
by enjoying good and forbid evil. So this is the jihad toward the wicked people, the weak people of disobedience, the people who are spreading mischief, the people who are killing with no right, the people who are you know, discriminating with, with action that does not make any sense. So this is, will be the next bet. In the way of Islam, you cannot do such a thing if you didn't first look in within yourself. Because if you want to fight injustice, you might be already an unjust person toward yourself and toward the closest people to you. Many people, one of the problems that many of our families, they have, they will report, for example, say, oh, this person, he's like an angel outside, but behind the doors, he's like, subhanAllah, totally different person. I say, where the justice? I mean, the per people who need to really uh, enjoy your justice and your kindness is your own family. And before your own family is yourself. So that's the jihad. So that's the jihad. How can I, you know, work on myself? To have a justice with first with myself. First. Justice with my time. Justice with my life. Justice with my purpose. And this is, it will be impossible impossible for any one of us to do it on his own or her, on her own. Why? Because you cannot even enumerate how many centers you have within yourself that antagonist, conflicting. You have many things in your mind you want to do. Your nafs has a lot of things that they want to get. Sometimes you are angry, sometimes you are, you know, emotionally weak, sometimes you are happy, sometimes you are laughing. So there is a lot of things, there is a whole universe inside you. What you from where are you going to start? By work on, on uh, one's, for example, you know, anger issue, or working on his injustice, or working on his relation with Allah, or a relation with his family, or relation and his work, where, from where he's going to start. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, he gave us a role model and he gave us element to trust. This is the way how you going to be, you know, doing so you can reach that purification of the soul. And you know that you are on the right path because as soon as you started, you still, you start to feel a breeze of nice air into your breast. That's how it starts. And that's why we call Islam, Islam. Islam is just to surrender to the path of Allah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to you that he's going to guarantee what you are seeking for to have. So, and the last one, as we have mentioned, is where one's soul is threatened. When someone, for example, you know, uh, work in his family is being attacked. You know, the nature, the, the nature of a human being is to defend his people, to defend his family, to defend his kids. But in defending it, he's putting his life at risk, right? So that's the highest jihad. And it happened for one's family, for one's property, and for one's country, and one's land. And the greatest is for one's, you know, the belief that he has, that he is with certainty leads to justice. He knows. Uh, he's not knows because I'm certain better than other, because the uh, deity, the only one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who told him. So the first one is an nafsu wa shaytanu are the two worst enemy of the self. Nafs and the shaytan. And nafsu is your own self. I say, how can I, you know, differentiate between myself and me? 
The self, subhanAllah, is part of you, has the gimmies, always want things. It's like, like someone who, who just, only the thing that they think about is to just quench their thirst. Regardless if it's good for you or it's not good for you. So someone is like blinded, they only want the desire, you know. To, let's say, you know, one of these things is the desire. Okay, so that's the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He has in the hadith, "Qala a'da a'daak nafsuk alati bayna jambeek." Or, "Kama qala the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam." The worst of your enemy is yourself. The self, this ego, which turned to be like that selfish part of of into our system. That is the worst enemy to you, because that part of ours it does not have reason. does not have reason, it does not have piety, it does not follow what makes sense, it only follow what it pleases the soul, it pleases the nafs. The second one is the shaitan. We believe that there is the shaitan, the devils, and the shaitan are, you know, a group, part of the jinn, And all their, you know, follower of uh, Iblis, Allah, Satan, all their, uh, you know, mission is to lead astray the children of Adam. So one of the scholars, early scholars saying, this is, I mean, the reason or the cause of going astray for every human being are these things first. So this is why it's the greatest part of our jihad. So he's saying, قال, uh, يقول أحدهم معبرا عن هذا الشقاء الذي نلمسه جميعا. This is uh, the downfall that everyone is at risk, at risk, subhanAllah, to confront it, to be in it, if not many already, they fell into it. So قال, Uh, إني ابتليت بأربع ما صلت إلا لشدة شقوتي وعنائي إبليس والدنيا ونفسي والهوى كيف الخلاص وكلهم أعدائي I have been tried with four they've been inflicted on me leading me to the worst of the path and leading me to my ruin and my corruption it is Iblis, Satan The dunya, the worldly life, how it's glittering, yeah? and people, they love all this materialistic thing. It's really, subhanAllah, leads a person astray. One FC and my nafs, who is like in contract with all these things. Well, hawa and the whims. How can I be saved then if all of these are my enemies? And here, subhanAllah, the believer always regard the balance. Now, we are t- talking about, uh, you know, when we're talking about the worldly life, the worldly life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to you as a gift to enjoy it, but not to make it your objective. He gave you the money and commanded you to work. And if you love to accumulate money, that's It's mashru, it's permissible. But the money to be your objective in your life that really decide and is the money who's really, you know, uh, making your emotion, he producing your emotion, he's the cause of like, subhanAllah, of your sadness and happiness. So when someone gaining money, he feel like, you know, extremely happy. When he's losing money, he's the saddest person. That's the problem. It's not the problem of having money and enjoying the buying of things you like, as long as it does not come to the level of waste. But the problem is the money becomes what really, you know, uh, functioning your system of emotion. He's the one who's really become the engine of your life, of your thoughts. It becomes literally a God because what it means a God for a human being and for, for, for a soul, when the thing we love 
is taking over our heart and our emotion and our feeling. That's the true God. That's the true God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, he said, the worst of the gods is one's whims. Because someone, whatever his or her whims are dictating on this person, they follow it. قال وحسبنا إذا أردنا أن نعرف خطورة النفس أن نقرأ قول الله تعالى and is enough for us to see how how dangerous is the part of the self that we have inside our soul uh, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa taala in Surah Yusuf uh, in the when uh, the wife of Al Aziz she said قالت وما أبرئ نفسي I'm not here to try to make myself innocent. After what she did to Yusuf alayhi salam, and you know all their plot against Yusuf with Joseph alayhi salam, you know being cast into prison for long years. What she said in the end, she said, "I'm not trying to make myself innocent here. Indeed, the nafs enjoin evil. My nafs has enjoined me evil. It's like she's talking about something else." that led her to, the, to this ill action. It is part of ourselves. In, in a saying, when they were coming back from, the, from a battle, uh, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, We came back from the small jihad, the small striving, to the biggest one. قال وما الجهاد الأكبر؟ What is this big striving, this big jihad, يا رسول الله؟ He said, is to strive your own self to make it on the right path. That's the big jihad. One of the scholar was enumerating, you know, some of the element to make it the biggest, because when someone, for example, in a war like before, you know, with the sword they line up, so they can see their enemy. The nafs, you don't see it. It's part of you. You love it. You take care of it. The other one, you can see the udda, what they have are, you know, armors and things. So you're ready to it. Your nafs, you're not ready. The other one is one confrontation and it ends. Your soul is every day with you. You go to sleep, is with you. You wake up with you. You go out with you. So it is a truly jihad akbar because it's, it's constant, it's continuous. And this is why if every servant wants to really uh, defeat his enemy or her enemy, uh, the enemy or any obstacle, to remove the obstacle stopping as or like being obstacle toward your success in this life and the hereafter, start by first making the striving within yourself. Therefore, who is the hero? The hero starts by first being master of his own soul. That's the hero. Like the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, he said uh, the, the hero, or like a shuja' of the one, he's not who defeat one in, in a match of wrestling. The one who control his anger at the moment of crisis. That's the hero. You see this different of perspective. It's not like about the muscle or skills that you defeat, you put someone down is how can you control yourself. The companion is when Allah Ta'ala alayhim, whatever they have achieved, and we have, all of you know, many of the stories of the companion, when Allah Ta'ala alayhim, by the guidance and the leadership of the Prophet, peace be upon him, it only happened, it only happened after they took mastery of their own soul, and they make the right jihad of the nafs. And the right jihad of the nafs, looking at these four elements, and I will finish 
you know, uh, with this, uh, insha'Allah, a few sentences. The right jihad is to be aware of the shaitan, to be aware of the worldly life and how much you want to get from it without be deluded and will be immersed in it without a purpose. Because if you want to buy a thing, you say, why am I buying it? Am, am I, you know, just, you know, uh, have that uh, appetite? Am I satisfying the appetite of shopping or because I need it? Why are you going out? Why are you having these friends? Why? What the purpose? So in this worldly life, enjoy it, but enjoy it with purpose. Not enjoy it by following, blindly following and imitating people. There's subhanAllah today nations, especially, you know, in, in what they call developing countries, to not say the other word. They imitate subhanAllah. I mean, in a country that I know very well, it's forbidden to have a beard. Why? Having a beard means like you practice the deen. Practicing the deen, you are dangerous. What it means, like you might be terrorists. And this is a Muslim country, by the way. Then, a kind of a fashion, it happened in the West, that everybody has a beard. So visiting this country, everyone has a beard. But the government is okay, this is like a fashion now. <laughs> Not practicing the deen. So this is subhanAllah the imitation. People, they do everything without knowing why they're doing it. They feel, they laugh and everything. When they go home, they feel sad inside. Why you are sad? Because you are not living your life. You are living the copy of other lives of people. It's not your life. Because you never thought what is your purpose of your life. You never thought why you are doing this. And this is the starting of the part of the jihad. So we have three types of nafs. There is nafs lawama, and there is nafs ammara, and there is nafs mutma'in. There's the nafs that reproach you, the reproaching one who's reminding you this is not good for you. And there's a nafs that is amara, enjoying the evil. Yeah, do it, it's great. But you say, and the one who believed it said, but it's haram. He said, Allah will forgive you. Don't worry, he's the most merciful. He's still young, do it now. Later, inshallah, you repent. Huh? Even people at their 50s and everything say it's still early. Look, you know, now people they live like 90 years and everything. So you can repent later. What repent? <laughs> the hadith, I mean, at that time, like someone has his luggage to, to go to the cemetery soon, which is not something that, uh, that being pessimistic. But this is our life. Actually, uh, you know, waiting, not waiting for death, meeting death is one of the subject and the purpose of the believer. So death, when it comes, you'll hug death, you know. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Let's go together to the next life. Huh? It's not running from it because you cannot run from death. Right? When nafs al and the peaceful soul or the peaceful nafs will give the definition, inshallah, the next time be it la or stop here, Jazakum Allah khair and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cleanse our soul and to help us be on the path of the true striving of the self and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the true purpose of our life and make our action to be linked with purpose or uh, based on purpose and those purpose will be extracted and inspired from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah make us successful in this life and the year after and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illuminate our heart and illuminate our path and lead us to, insha'Allah, achieve the greatest of the objective pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ridwanullahi akbar. Wa jazakumullahi khairan wa barakallahu feekum.